Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a film that, because of what all happened last year, it didn't get a theatrical release, but it was released streaming and other places where you could like rent it or buy it uh, digitally for a while. Um, and then it got its own uh, Blu-ray release later. Um, I saw it when it initially came out on like, streaming, like Amazon Prime, uh, last May. And, uh, yeah, I know it released somewhere. I forget offhand where exactly, but it released in theaters and uh, I believe a s one country. Not America. Even though here in America, you know, States like where I live opened up and after a lockdown never had to uh, close down again. Places that remained open and in some places never closed at all and were basically fine. Um, you know, uh, this film just didn't get a theatrical release uh, nationwide here in America nor worldwide as I'm sure uh, was planned. Um, but, uh, regardless of that, uh, I was able to see it on Amazon Prime, um, and it came out on Blu-ray, uh, some months after its, uh, uh, initial release, streaming, um, and then I got it, um, obviously, and, uh, that film is Capone, uh, starring Tom Hardy as Al Capone. And um, one thing that's, that struck me, because uh, this film was in development and was filming for quite some time, and then they were editing it for a long time. Like, filming wrapped at some point in 2018. And, you know, it could have been released that fall like the fall of 2018, or 2019 release. Well, 2018 came and went, and talk and speculation about this film kept going. And it was one of those films that's like, it just, you would hear, hear one thing or two, and then there's absolutely nothing. And then for the longest time, it was being edited. And then it's like, is this film ever going to come out? You know, it's like, I, I like to see it, regardless if it's good or not. I want to see this film, uh, the pictures of Tom Hardy as Al Capone on uh, social media. Like, he, uh, on Instagram, I follow him on Instagram, and he posted various pictures of him in uh, Al Capone makeup. And he looked really quite good, um, the makeup and everything. And so he, you know, there was definitely stuff with uh, this film that it was being made it got made like at least filmed and then for like a year and a half or so there was nothing and then in March uh, or April I forget exactly when last year a trailer dropped and then in May streaming you could uh, watch it and I did and, uh, and this film is about like the last year of Al Capone's life, where he, uh, you know, has syphilis and dementia, and that's not an area where people with Capone really focus much, if any. You know, film about uh, Al Capone or has Al Capone featured quite a bit. That part of his life is really not ever talked about. It, it, you know, it's just something that because of, like, the kind of guy Al Capone was and how he was very powerful and intimidating and frightening and everything, like, at the height of his power, you know, that's really interesting to, you know, a lot of people, you know, me included. You know, I actually enjoy gangster films, and so one with, like, real-life gangsters like Al Capone is quite interesting. But that part of his life, of the final years, or final year in this case, of his life of having syphilis and dementia, uh, is fascinating. And, you know, when there isn't 
too much uh, documented of documented of last years where he is sick and is dying. Um, and I think for the obvious reasons that, at least in terms of film form, they don't really talk about because it's like the exciting stuff of his rise to power and the height of his power and everything and his fall of tax evasion and going to prison. You know, in a lot of ways, that's like really, it's like that's the story of Al Capone. That's pretty of much of interest. But then there's the whole part of the last years or year and he has dementia, syphilis, and he's sort of slowly dying. That isn't really talked much about. And um, and so, you know, uh, on one hand, you could probably take what happens in this film with a grain of salt. You know, it seems like, you know, the director, Josh Trank, who wrote and directed this film, um, researched Al Capone for a good while, particularly this part of his life, um, and then created a script and then made a film about this. Um, it, it's a film that, you know, like when you, like, I'm sure there are some bases of reality of certain things, like there's some family gatherings, I'm sure stuff like that did happen in real life, but then, you know, there's other stuff like, you know, it, in the film, you know, if you haven't seen this film, there's somebody in this film that he, uh, Al Capone, talks to quite a bit, only to find out, oh, that's a figment of his imagination. Like, that guy's been gone for years, been dead or, you know, something. And it's it's quite interesting in how the, the illnesses that he has is affecting him. And then, you know, he pees himself and, you know, messes his pants and all that. And there are some people who are really uh, up, upset about that aspect, like he's crapping and peeing himself, and then he just, you know, that's like, it seems to be played for laughs. It's like, well, not really. I mean, that's what kind of happens when somebody is losing their mind. You begin to lose functions, your bodily functions, like going to the bathroom. Walking and you know he's, he he has to have a cane at times and you know other things of that nature. It's like he's losing his mind, losing his functions, and it's just kind of sad to see how somebody at one point was really, really you know a very powerful figure, albeit you know not a very good figure, a pretty bad one. But you know how somebody as well known and the as always feared Al Capone was to then, you know, be reduced to what you see in this film. And I think in many ways what you see um, isn't probably that far from the truth. You know, when you look at dementia and syphilis and how that affects the brain and the person, it's just, it's very terrible. Um, and so I thought that was interesting. Um, of course, this isn't going to be a you know, that aspect isn't necessarily going to appease to everybody, but um, I found it interesting, you know. It's about a period of his life that isn't really talked much about, unless you watch any sort of very in-depth documentaries about Al Capone. Then, yeah, they'll probably be as detailed and truthful, and people who have researched Al Capone and found stuff of people who are close to him, uh, family members, close friends, all that. Eh, that. I'm sure, you know, Josh Trank uh, probably um, researched and consumed any and all things that he could find about the last year of Capone's life. And um, Tom Hardy does a very incredible job. Uh, Linda Cardinale uh, plays his wife. Um, Matt Dillon is in this film. Um, Kyle McLaughlin is as well. Um, Jack Loden, who was in Dunkirk with Tom Hardy, he was the other um, Spitfire pilot in that film. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of great talented people. Um, 
also the uh, uh, Lawrence Bender, who produced uh, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, pr helped produce this film. You know, it's been a while since I saw his name on a film. Um, yeah, it's in an executive producer of Joker. Oh, there's a lot of them, and I can't recall offhand who it was without pulling that film down and seeing which names are which. But you know, this is a very fine movie. I, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, Again, I know there are people who are quite split on this. There are some who enjoy it, and then there's others who don't. I enjoy it for how it was... It's unique um, in its take on Al Capone's life. And also, you kind of see... It's sort of like remembering things, and... Because of, like, you know... Syphilis and, you know... Dimension and all these, like, rem seeing things and stuff that isn't there and you know a big part of it is like you know it's um it's said that he has millions of dollars hidden away somewhere that he knows but because of the state of his mind like he can't remember if he does or if he doesn't and if he does where is it uh, you know he doesn't know in the fbi you know they want to find it because you know you know, he's got money hidden somewhere, and they want to get it. Um, and so it's it's very interesting. A lot of stuff that goes on, and even seems to be like, you know, he might, might kind of regret some of the stuff that he's done um, at certain parts with uh, certain moments. Like, you, you kind of have that feeling like he may have regretted some of the stuff that he himself had done or ordered to be have done it's very interesting to see perhaps like how he might have been regretful uh, in his last year uh, final days and um, and that's interesting I think regardless of how true that is you know it's it's interesting for a film at least at least for a film I think that's quite interesting um, of course, that may not may not have ever happened in real life, but you know, Al Capone is a very interesting guy. Tom Hardy, I think, did a fine job playing Capone. There are those who think that he's his voice for it was, which was essentially Bugs Bunny. That was his inspiration. And then again, you know, Bugs Bunny, Brooklyn, Al Capone's from New York. You know. It, him taking inspiration from a somebody from somebody even if it's a fictional character from that's essentially has an accent that's from New York it kind of works and it's also kind of I guess you could say it could be creepy too like you know I I wasn't necessarily creeped out by it but it's very interesting I could possibly see how the sort of Bugs Bunny like voice coming out of Tom Hardy playing Al Capone could be very creepy and disturbing to many people, uh, or at least to some. Uh, it's just, it's very fascinating, very interesting. It's a film I re-watched recently, because I enjoyed it. I saw it last year, a uh, few times streaming, and then got it uh, um, uh, on Blu-ray, and, uh, yeah, it's just a film that I think is really, is actually quite good. Not necessarily the best film of 2020, but a film that is very good in its own right. It's very, very interesting to see the very, at the very least. And, um, yeah. Uh, uh, if this got a theatrical release, at least where I live, I would have definitely seen it. Um. Even though, I, yeah, I saw it on streaming, and even if I got it on Blu-ray, then it later had a theatrical run, I would have watched it, um, just because I think it's a film that, is, that it would be worth watching on the big screen, at least once. Um, again, that's me, you know. But uh, this is a film that was quite, it was very good. Um, uh, 
I think uh, uh, the more I watch it, the more I enjoy it. And that's something that I think is always good for films. Like, the more you watch something, you enjoy it more. Because there's a rewatchability. It's not like you watch something once, you really liked it, but then the more you watch it, you're like, yeah, this isn't as... There isn't as much rewatchability as perhaps the first time or two you saw it. Um, I have a feeling, though, that I will enjoy this movie more as I watch it. And um, and I was very... And I did keep my word last week that, that there would be like a comic book uh, character of... or somebody who was in comic book films. My last Batman video that... You know, this week I would be talking about a film that starred somebody who was in comic book films and, you know, Tom Hardy was Bane and The Dark Knight Rises and Eddie Brock and Venom and Venom. Uh, so I wasn't lying. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this was a... I think this, this is a very interesting film at the very least. You know, even if you don't like it or enjoy it overall, I think this is a film that would be at least worth watching um, once. Um, yeah, he does go to the bathroom on himself here and there, but again, with the state of mind, and I've heard, uh, saw people review the film, and they thought that was just played for laughs, but it's like, you know, the guy's losing his mind, he's losing the certain functions that were, you know, once he learned, like, once he learned at a very early age how to do things like walk and go to the bathroom, on his own and all. Uh, he has syphilis and dementia and all this. He's not able to function properly. And I think there's many people who just missed that. They just saw him going to the bathroom uh, in his pants and, and, you know, whether when he's sitting with people or in bed sleeping and all that. Like, they just take that and, like, it's just... You, done for laughs. Well, no, it's not done for laughs. You're not supposed to be laughing at this. It's it happens because, well, that's what does happen to people. They start to lose their mind and they're, they begin to lose certain functions. And I think that some people just didn't understand that and just interpret it like, oh, you're, everybody's supposed to laugh at this and it's just weird and all. And That's not the case, but you know, I guess that's just some people's thoughts. Um, I don't know if they, some of those people who reviewed that initially, I, I, I watched some people's reviews of this film just to see what other people thought, and it was interesting to see the response and how for some people that seemed to be a recurring thing. Um, to you, if you see this, just know that, of course, uh, you know, on the off chance you weren't aware of that with dementia or syphilis and all that, where you start to lose your mind and certain functions, you know. Keep that in mind when you're watching the film, so when those parts happen, you know, it makes sense. Um, yeah. It also affects one's ability to speak, too. Um, so, yeah, uh, there is uh, there is the video for today and the week. Um, Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's really cool to rewatch this film and talk about it. I meant to talk about it last year, but then there was other movies. You know, I wanted to talk about certain films often get pushed back and sometimes take quite some time for me to ever get uh, to them. But I'm happy I was able to get to this one. Um, this was uh, quite fun to do, and I'm, I'm happy to have. Uh, finally been able to uh, talk about this. Um, so, uh, have you seen this film? Um, if so, do you like it? Do you dislike it? Um, and if you're, if you haven't seen it, uh, is it a film that maybe you're interested in uh, now? Um, uh, if you weren't before, or if you haven't heard it before, maybe you'd be curious to check it out. Um, or not. Um, perhaps gangster, gangsters uh, in films may not be your thing. Um, I know that's a that 
that for many people that's a thing that they are they're not interested in gangster films or anything that has to do with any gangster at, at any point in their life uh real or fictional so uh yeah leave a comment if you like and uh yeah hope you all have a great day a great weekend and a great week and i'll see you all next time Bye.